Hey everybody, welcome back to the Rebel Chums channel. Today we're going to talk about some tips for beginners that want to get into the hobby. So you're looking to buy your first lightsaber? Well, we're going to talk about some of the options out there. And based on a few very important factors, you're going to decide where uh, you're going to head into which direction. And um, that's really important because there's a lot of different voices within the Sabre community about where you should buy from, where you should not buy from, etc, etc, etc. And um, without, without that much tangible information or knowledge or uh, background information, um, it's hard sometimes to take up some of those um, information or tips, etc. that are being given by various people. Um, I get into in a second what I mean with that, but let me start off a bit the first thing I want to say and and I, I think that's really important I see some comments recently and um, I think we really have to distinguish one thing first and foremost you want to get into collecting lightsabers because you are a Star Wars fan so you either want to have a Luke Skywalker Graflex lightsaber uh, or Anakin lightsaber or a Rey lightsaber whatever type of lightsaber you want to get you want a movie prop you wanna you wanna get a custom piece. You wanna you get you wanna get something from the Clone Wars. You wanna get something from something else. It uh, it really depends. Like it, there's so many angles you want you wanna get uh, why you wanna get into custom lightsaber collecting. So you wanna get your first one and you're not entirely sure where you should buy from. You hear good and bad stories about saber forts, alter sabers. Uh, you hear a lot of praise about Vader's fault, but. Uh, Vader Fold doesn't offer you the lightsaber designs you like. For some reason, you just don't fit your needs, or you just don't feel appealed to them, or they're outside of your budget. So that is where I want to make some recommendations because I get a lot of comments where, where people say, "Why do you recommend Saber Forge or Alter Sabers? You should never do that because this, 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 this reason, and this happened in the past, and blah, 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 blah." True, all true. Well, a lot of people are not really interested in that. They're not interested what a CIO of a company did. They're not interested in what the history of a company was. For example, um, I may just make a weird analogy, but Hitler was the first one to come up with the Volkswagen. Yeah, the, the, the Volkswagen is now a beloved car brand. A lot of people buy from that brand. And you know, of course, <laughs> where the car brand come from. They want a car that drives good, is reliable, etc., etc., etc. In a modern age, um, they had a rough, bad pack, a, um, a patch, or a, a bad history behind them. But it's not longer representing the company that makes the brands anymore, like that that the brand anymore. It's not longer Hitler in charge of the Volkswagen cars. Like it's long gone those times, and. The same with Saber Forts and Alter Sabers. Yeah, uh, the owners have done some things that are not uh, justifiable and they're really bad and scummy. Um, but on the other hand, uh, those companies provide us with all kinds of lightsabers, uh, custom sabers uh, that, in a lot of cases, for a lot of people, fit what they're seeking for. So a lot of people find what they seek for in Alter Sabers, and a lot of people find what they seek for in Saber Forts. And that's why I want to bring a bit of a, a, a counter force here, a little bit of a feedback on my end about starting getting your first custom lightsaber. So the most important fact that you have to think about when you get into custom lightsabers is how much money do you want to spend? Where do you feel comfortable? Because it really goes up significantly depending on the brand, the soundboard used, the technology used, etc. It can go into the thousands of US dollars to just get a really nice high-end lightsaber piece. Or you just start with the bottom, and that's, for example, a lightsaber out of China from YDD or some other uh, manufacturers that relabel them and have a, uh, a cool lightsaber for 70 US dollar. has some bells and whistles, not, not, not super fancy, uh, no, I mean, a, a, a rather basic soundboard, uh, rather basic LED setup with some flash and class, etc. Um, or you can go the official license Hasbro uh, route where you buy official license Hasbro lightsabers. I mean, 
Disney lightsaber. So you can buy the Graflax, you can buy the the, the, the Cross Guard, Kylo, all, all kinds of lightsabers, but made by Hasbro. And they're in the Toys R Us, they're in any toy store for around 100 to 150 US dollar. You can often find them discounted. They're really nice collector pieces, to be honest. They're nice hilts. The hilt designs look really cool. They're not made for dueling. Um, they're really for just display and just turning on and off uh, once in a while. Nothing really fancy beyond that. But if you just want to collect a bunch of lightsabers and you want to have them displayed, that is where I would say look first at there. Look, look, start looking at the Hasbro lightsabers. Uh, they're a bit bulky, they're a bit oversized. They're not one-on-one -on -one replicas. Uh, oh well, however, the um, Kylo Ren Gross Guard and the Graflex are really nice um, lightsabers. So I definitely can say, yeah, those are fine to start collecting with. Those are nice. But if you go for a Luke Skywalker Hero lightsaber, for example, then they're not really fantastic. But if you get the one from Disney Parks, then you are really on the right track. They're really nice replica lightsabers for the money and their official license. So they also have some value behind them, collector's value over time. Where custom lightsabers, yes and no. Um, they can um, be seen as an investment over time, but at the other hand, they're just not, um, not as desirable by the masses as the Hasbro lightsabers because everybody's familiar with them and they're easier to collect, etc. and get your hands on. So. I would say start looking at that range. So you just look at it and see if that fits your uh, requirements. If it doesn't, like you really want to get a lightsaber because you want to go dueling with it. Sorry, I see a lot of smudges on my lightsaber. I don't like smudges. Keep it clean. Um, then you can start looking at dueling lightsabers. Now dueling lightsabers, you can get from almost all lightsaber manufacturers. Um, most and for most, you're probably gonna look at Alter Sabers and Saber Force, and I would recommend that. Look at Alter Sabers Saber Force. They have a big offering of different hilt designs, and their lightsabers are starting, I don't know, between 75 to 100 US dollar for a stunt uh, lightsaber that just has uh, a, a light but no sound. And um, I personally prefer Saber Forts over Alta Sabers because their hilt designs are a little bit more interesting, but the downside is for dueling. They tend to have a bit more sharp edges, they're not as refined or um, comfortable as the Alter Sabers lightsabers, which are actually even uh, more unrefined types of lightsabers because they're more like fancy tubes uh, with a, uh, a, a an on and off switch and a, and, a, and a light bulb inside. So that's how you basically can see it. They're not as refined, but they're really good for dueling because they're very sturdy. There's not a lot of bits and pieces hanging off the lightsabers. They're just really streamlined, just really well made for dueling. But um, at the same time, they're not really the type of lightsabers that you would see in the Star Wars universe. So you wouldn't see the, the Alter Sabers lightsabers there because they're really lacking details and they're just not, they're not really fancy. Now, of course, you can go on the higher end in, within the Alter Sabers line and then you get the more fancy lightsabers. But then you have the part where the actual hilts are quite oversized, like the actual dimensions of the hilts are larger than what you see in the movie or any other, other saber company that makes that particular replica lightsaber. Um, so I'm not too keen on that personally, but I'm not everybody. Some people really dig to have bigger, chunkier lightsabers because they're bigger, chunky, your uh, man and woman. I'm just a frail little boy. So I like my lightsabers to be a bit more um, condensed. And that's why I like Saber Force. Saber Force has that middle ground between Alter Sabers and Vader's Fault in terms of hilt length and dimensions. Um, I feel comfortable holding a, a bit of a, you know, I have a little bit of a, a substance, holding a bit of a substance. I love Vader's Fault, but Vader's Fault lightsabers are rather thin. Like they're really, in certain cases, this is a Solo's Hold lightsaber, it's a bit of an, uh, an indication. Um, it's thinner than this and, well, not much thinner than this because uh, it's basically the inner dimensions of, uh, the outer dimensions of a lightsaber dueling blade and then have a little bit of meat around that. That's the hilt uh, for a Vader's, blade, Vader's Fault in general. So just imagine holding a lightsaber blade uh, and then add a little bit extra to it, and that is basically the thickness of efforts Vader's full lightsaber. That's to me a bit too thin. 
Um, I was uh, every time I have these beautiful lightsabers from Vader Fold over time, I sell them again because when I hold them, I feel they're just they're a bit too thin for me. Um, a lot of people love that, and I can totally understand why because it's just high end quality. But for me, the feel of the lightsaber in the hand that's really important as well. So um, that's why I gravitate to Saber Fort. So. Although there's a bad history behind those two companies, Alter Saber Saberforts and, uh, and the owners and what they have done and etc, etc, etc. In the end, it's still up to you to make the decision from what brand you're going to buy a lightsaber. And you're probably going to gravitate to a few things that is within your grasp when you're looking for a lightsaber. A, you already looked at the Hasbro lightsabers. Um, they might not be the ones for you. And that's why you're not getting into those. And that's why you gravitate to other Saber Saberforts and other companies. Then you look at budget, like how much you want to spend on your first one, two, three lightsabers. Um, if you get into the hobby, you might say, I want to go for the best of the best in the industry. I just going to spur it out a good amount of money and have just great stuff. Or you're going to start on the stunt uh, lightsaber setup where you just have light, no sound, and you're gonna start with something from Alt Saber Saber Force because you also gravitate to the lightsaber designs, the actual hilt designs, like how the hilt looks like, and um, yeah, you're gonna gravitate to that. So, what you're gonna do next is you're gonna watch a whole bunch of reviews from different YouTubers, and then I'm talking about, of course, Rebel Chums, uh, Saber Sourcing, uh, Sidious Sabers, um, uh, there's a whole bunch of other ones. Uh, Gart, I don't know if Gart is still online, um, Dart, Gart, Gart, I forgot his name, I'm sorry. Um, uh, and there's a whole bunch of other uh, lightsaber uh, YouTubers out there that review lightsabers. And you're gonna watch those videos and um, they're gonna give you their opinion, like including myself, like I say, oh, I don't like this, I don't like this, or I like this about the hill. And some like everything, they just like everything. That is not always useful because uh, you don't know exactly like is that a positive thing or is it a negative thing or is it just neutral um, it, it, an, an opinion can help you to make your form your own opinion as well because um, that's why you're seeking for opinions in the first place right you want to have some information why uh, you should buy from this company or not so you're gonna do research you're gonna look all these videos and then um, the the thing that there's one thing that always catches on and that is like the personal uh, attachment or the personal uh, feeling you get for a certain hill design you like I understand that brand is not very good or trustworthy or uh, had a bad rap in the past but I really like that lightsaber design I really want to get it so you still gravitate towards that hill design from the set saber company and it's often like saber forts or alter sabers and you're gonna do it regardless because it's your it's your money it's you're gonna decide on that so be aware like I can make the recommendations but what I often see in the end, people still will buy that or that uh, lightsaber from that company because that's what they mostly interested in. What I can do uh, and what I will do in this video is tell you um, if you're going to buy from all the sabers or saber force, do not buy their champion tier or hero tier. Honestly, I do not think their soundboards are good. Either from Alter Sabers or Saber Forts, they're really lackluster. They still use inhaled LEDs. When we live in a time or era of NeoPixel lightsabers, uh, that is just unsatisfying for the money. And you're gonna pay 300, 400, 500 US dollar on a decked out Alter Sabers or Saber Forts uh, lightsaber, and it's still lackluster in all the technology that you get. That's really 10 year old tech. In your lightsaber and and this honestly that is not acceptable so if you're going to spend four four hundred five hundred us dollar man go look at saber mach alter uh, a saber mach a saber trio vader's fold um wonder force ultimate works look at their neo pixels uh offerings and for that money um buy one of those lightsabers from those companies because you're gonna get a much better soundboard much better insulation um you're gonna get a better uh, you're gonna get a new pixel setup and you're gonna have like all the bells and whistles but if you're not looking for all the bells and whistles in in one lightsaber and you just want to have a couple of them and you want to keep within a certain budget then of course the alter sabers and saber force uh, stunt sabers are fantastic they're they are fantastic now alter sabers have the grab axe really fun exciting way to get uh, get a hands on lightsabers and there, of course, I keep saying that the, the battery pack is really fra fragile, breaks easy. The LED is not very bright. Uh, Saber Ford's quackery LEDs get hot. You can almost cook an egg on them. So after a time, they get uncomfortably hot. 
uh, near the neck area where the LED houses underneath. Um, that is things you have to consider and just have to live with. That's just a, a bit of a trade-off. I mean, that is what it is. You're, you're working with a budget. If um, you just want to have the max within a certain small budget, then of course you, you have to gravitate to the Hasbro lightsabers because you get the sound, you get the soundboard. Of course, it's all very mundane. It's not very good. It's not very bright, not very loud, but they're really nice replicas of movie lightsabers that you can put on your shelf, you can look at them, you can play with them when you watch the movies, etc. It's just not made for dueling, which is a big part of the custom lightsabers, and that's why you probably want to get into custom lightsabers, because you actually want to pass people with them. Uh, but then again, another question would be, are you willing to bash a lightsaber that's 500 US dollars, 600 US dollars, or even more, uh, at your friends? No is the answer for me. I just have these really cheap Alta Sabers or Saber Force lightsabers where I duel with. And um, the reason for that being is because when you duel, you actually impact with the hilt uh, of the opponent hilt sometimes or uh, it drops on the ground and it just gets dinged up, bent up, scratched up. That's something that I don't want on a really expensive lightsaber. So that's why I use these cheap Alta Sabers or Saber Force Stun Sabers. So, um, when people say, um, well, when you ask the question in many for uh, Facebook groups, like the Lightsaber Club uh, group, which I highly recommend, it's a really fun group, I'm an admin there, so of course I'm a bit biased by saying that, or the Vault or the Lead Lightsaber uh, group, um, join those group and you're going to ask the question, hey guys, I'm going to buy first Lightsaber, which should I use, uh, should I buy from Alt Saber, Saber Forts or Vader's Vault? Yeah, of course, with, depending on which group you're going to ask it, they're going to give a different answer. If you ask it in the big Saber Forts group, of course you get Saber Forts as an answer and uh, a good amount of chunk uh, or also uh, uh, for um, Vader's Vault, but not Alt Sabers and vice versa. So you really get a biased view on... Uh, which brand to choose from because there's a big fandom for each of those brands because um, there's a there's a big following of brand loyalty within the community because it's really small mom and pop shop so uh, except for Alter Saber Saber Force are rather big but Fraser Fold and, and, and Saber Mach and Saber Tree etc are small companies you you know the owner you can also have a, a personal relationship with them you can become friends with them and of course you want the best for them etc so that's where that whole uh, atmosphere of these little micro um, uh, fan groups uh, come from. And uh, that is something you need to understand when you're gonna ask these kind of questions. Where are you gonna ask the questions? In what group are you? Uh, who's representing that group, etc. cetera? Um, because no group is unbiased. Uh, a lot of the admins and mods have some sort of association with a Sabre company or whatnot. And that's just how it is. A small community, small industry and uh, yeah, so be aware of that. So that's why I try to make these videos and I, I do get some feedback in a negative uh, way where people say, why can why do you recommend Alter Sabers and Saber Force? They have shit soundboard, etc. It's because that's what people like. People like that. People buy from it because they like it. And um, some people, of course, want to be educated and they, they will move over to Vader's Vault, etc. They read between the lines and they go gravitate to those brands. That will happen. But you cannot force people to only buy from Vader's Vault, for example. Um, that's not going to work. Like, I can praise Vader's Vault every week, but it doesn't really come true for a lot of people because they just gravitate to a certain hill design from Saber Forge or Alter Sabers. Or they just like the brand, they like what they offer, and that's that's good for them. They don't have to be super involved with the whole community. They don't want to know all the ins and outs of what the owner did or uh, how often he washes his underwear, etc. That is for some people really interesting, including myself. And some most people are like, I don't care. I just want to have some cool lightsabers to collect next to my Funko Pops, next to my uh, Star Wars toy action figures, etc. And that's it. That's it. I don't need to be so involved with all that nitty gritty stuff. So that's why also that influences um, the uh, perception of which brand you should buy from, etc. And how people try to uh, force that a little bit on you um, when you ask these kind of questions in sad groups. So, when you're gonna buy a lightsaber, I just look at, start look at the Hasbro uh, officially licensed lightsabers. 
if that's not what you're seeking for, you really want to duo with lightsabers, or you're seeking just more, you want a more, you want a brighter uh, hilt, a uh, brighter lightsaber, uh, a light coming out of the lightsaber. You want Neo Pixel. You want a, a CFX soundboard with uh, uh, hyper smooth and piper piper pooper mood. <laughs> I just make up stuff now. Right? You, you get the point. You really want to get like the, the 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 best of the best in the market, and you just not want to settle with a a semi toy collectible toy from Hasbro then of course you go into the collectible lightsabers and then depending on your budget and depending on what kind of hilt design you want you're gonna um, quickly find where you want to buy your lightsaber from and that can be Vader Fold, Saber Mach, Saber Trio or all the other all the other companies Saber, uh, say, uh, bleh, Alter Sabers or Saber Force those will probably will be always be the first ones that cross your mind because they're so accessible and easy to get uh, you know get through and check it out and whatnot and probably a lot of close friends or relatives or people that you know have a lightsaber from either brand because they're so i mean they're just much more for uh, accessible and the, the, the start price is not per se more affordable but uh, affordable enough that you get easy enough into these two brands so um am i Am I in personally in camp Saber Forge or Alter Sabers? No, I'm not. Um, because I have owned <clears throat> a whole lot of Saber Forge lightsabers over 30. And I, whole, I had a whole bunch of issues. You can check that in all my reviews. So I personally don't spend my money with Saber Forge on buying their uh, sabers with soundboards and light. Because it's too expensive for what I get. That's my personal opinion. Uh, maybe it's enough for you. Maybe you say I'm settled with this. I'm happy with this because I really want to have that hilt, that hilt design. But I also want to have sound and light. I just don't want to buy a stun saber or empty hilt from saber for it. I want to have the soundboard, etc. As well, and it's enough for me. That's fine. Can be, but you're gonna pay around three, four hundred US dollar, maybe five hundred US dollar for something that is completely underwhelming against a company like what offers uh, Seder Fold or uh, Saber Mach or Saber Trio or another company, they just have much better for the same money. Uh, but maybe just not the hill design you liked or were seeking for the hill dimensions. You were like, mm, it's a bit too big, bulky, big. I talk Alter Sabers and maybe some other company that uses the MHS uh, treading system. And uh, it just uh, it's a bit too 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 much for you, and you really want something smaller or not too small and whatever. Um, that is the hard part, getting into the hobby. So that's why I I, I want to give this more open answer and not say buy from Vader's Fold because they're the best. Period. Yeah, they're they're very good. Absolutely true, but I mean doesn't per se mean that it's gonna fit you and your needs etc so what I want to tell with this video is you need to do a bit of a your own homework like I can't tell and I can't tell you out or spell you out which you have to buy from um, just watch a lot of videos and be a be more of a silent observer uh, from different brands and then you know choose and pick one and and just you no know, a bit of a trial and error a bit of a trial error, unfortunate, it's true. You're gonna spend some money, you're gonna buy something, probably, maybe, not really, in the end, suiting what you need. Um, that is always gonna happen because these are non-essential products in your life. This is a, a I mean, a decked out gra Graflex lightsaber it can easily cost you 500, 600 US dollar with NeoPixel. It's a non-essential product in your life. You could easily buy almost two PlayStation 4 from that with several games. That is how much custom lightsabers cost, or they can go be much more expensive than that. So you have to put a bit of things in perspective about your budget, etc. And if you're willing to spend that kind of money on uh, on lightsabers, and um, it's it's really a niche product in a, in a niche hobby, and it's of course growing because Star Wars is ever popular, um, but. Um, it is something to consider like you could collect a lot more action figures and Star Wars toys and whatnot for a lot less money than one custom lightsaber with NeoPixel so yeah be aware of that you're getting into a hobby that is in general quite expensive 
Um, of course, some people say, well, a stun saber of 70 US dollar is not expensive. I would argue 70 US dollar is still a lot of money uh, for uh, something that uh, is is on the on the on the bottom of the hobby itself uh, in terms of the the quality, um, the um, the sound and the light. So yeah, be aware of that. On the other hand, you can collect a whole bunch of these stuff for a really small penny and uh, have shelves full with action figures versus one little corner with one lightsaber. So um, it really depends on how, how, how willing you are want to go into it, how much money you are willing to spend. And from there, you will be able to quickly find out what will f feel fit within your range and budget. And if you really feel adventurous and you're like, I want to have this small indie company that it makes this really small batch of lightsabers, then there's a whole bunch of other lightsaber companies I can recommend uh, that are not Alta Sabers, that are not Faders Volt or not uh, Saber Forts. There's a whole bunch of smaller companies out there that do equally good stuff and uh, make really unique stuff as well um, that are worth checking out. But yeah, you need to... Uh, you need to know those and I could make a video about those companies if you want if you're really looking for something that is more um, exotic within the in the community um, because they're new companies or they just want to keep low-key etc um, I can I can do more about that but yeah I hope I hope this video helped you a bit like it's it's really not uh, it's not a cookie cutter answer I want to give you. There's other people that do you give you like uh, you buy this company, uh, buy this brand, and do this and that. You could listen to that and do it, but in the end, it's gonna be really fitting what you need. Like when you see that hill design, is it really gonna? Is it? Is it? Is it something you really want to have? It's going to be a guilty pleasure, you know. Like all oh, people talk shit about auto sabers, but I really want to have that hill design. What should I do? I just I feel pressured in buying a Vader full because that's the past, and I need to have that if I want to be taken serious in the hobby. No, no, don't don't think like that. Honestly, it just just choose things because you want to, and um, just but but yeah, if people give you tips and information, listen carefully, learn from it, and then in the end, if you decide against it, or yeah, whatever, it's your decision. That's my point. That's my point. Is just. It, it doesn't matter, like, I, I can't say, yeah, Vader's Fold is the best buy from them, uh, period. Then, then that, I mean, there's 10 other YouTubers that will do that. There's all 10, 100 other Facebook members in the groups that will tell you that. Um, but, yeah, you listen to the, why, why they say that and then understand that. And, and yeah, I mean, it's your money. <laughs> I mean, if you if you want to spend your money on this and that, that's, that's your uh, goodwill. So... That is a little bit my thing. Um, don't get caught up about uh, the little nitty gritty things like politics, uh, individual owner history, etc. Because we don't do that on a daily basis. We don't do that for Samsung or the phone that you're using now. Um, you're not. You, you're not looked into. Or maybe you did, but a lot of people don't look into what the CEO of a company of your phone brand, where you're watching this video on, did in the past, and then decide against buying from that brand or not. Um, that's not really how it mostly 